Hello, welcome once again to Blackpool. We're back for more action from the Foster's World 8-Ball Pool Championships. We're now at the semi-final stages of the men's event. We're now the first to ten and two terrific matches in prospect. Let's take a look at the lineup then in these two semi-finals. Adam Davis will take on Phil Harrison and later on it's Mick Hill against Mark Farnsworth. So there we are, that's the prospect. Let's get the view now from Keith, because uh, Keith uh, Barber, you've, you've seen all the action right the way through. Have we got the right mix in these four semi-finalists? Well, I think we've got four great players left in the event, and I think all four want to win it, and that always adds up to, to some potential great pull. Yeah, terrific. I mean, I'm looking forward to it, but this first semi-final that's coming up, in, involving Adam uh, and Phil, I mean, they've got history because they played before, but... It, Potentially, this is a great match. Yeah, of course, and, and both have showed good form in the event as well. Uh, Phil, in particular, I thought was absolutely rock solid in his quarter-final match. And both of these players are desperate to make the final, I know that. So there will, there will be no rush shots, they'll be both be playing to win. Let's have a look and see how Adam got to this stage of the tournament. He's been pretty impressive so far. I mean, that win over Gareth Potts was, was sensational. Was that a combination of maybe Gareth not quite being on his game and Adam being good? Or, or are we not doing justice there to how good Adam was? Um, I, th I think, to be fair, Gareth was well below par, and sometimes if you have got two very good players playing and one plays below par, yes. sometimes it can rock your, you rock your game a little bit. Um, I think Adam did what he had to do to win the match, but he may have to step it up just a little bit to beat Phil. And talking of Phil, this is what he did. Of course, he had a pretty straightforward quarter-final, didn't he, against Darren Matthew. Not a real test for him, but these two have got a good history. And in fact, going back to last year, Phil lost at uh, the quarter-final stage, didn't he, to Adam? He certainly did, and uh, that will be on his mind, I'm sure, going into this match. He want a bit of revenge, but Adam will also be feeling confident. So so do you think this one is going to run to the distance? Is it going to go right the way down to the first one? I don't, see, I don't see why it shouldn't run to the distance, but of course, as we know, sometimes one player can build up some momentum and get a couple of frames clear. If one of them does that, it'll be hard to catch. Do you just get the feeling maybe this could be Adam's year? Well, I don't know about Adam's year to win the event, but <laughs> I think possibly maybe Adam's year to make the final. OK, thanks very much indeed, Keith. There we are, we're all set to go. The players are set. Now let's join Jim White and the commentary team. Semi-final action you, and gentlemen. in the Foster's World 8-Ball Pool Championship. Adam, Adam Davis, Davis and, Phil Harrison. and Phil Harrison, as announced, make their way on to center stage. Let the battle commence. Sean Baker and Lee Kendall, you really have to tip just slightly Adam Davis in this. Yes, um, Adam's probably got the slight edge, being the victor as he was last year in the quarter-final against Phil Harrison and also beating Gareth Potts as well. Adam Davis to break. I think he's going to carry time that running. win with him for a long time, never mind just this match. Frame number one. Adam Davis with the break. It's now a race to ten, best of 19. Settle in. Foul. Well. He would have liked to have had a better start than that, but settle in. This one's going to be a good one. Well, immediately, it's a poor, poor break-off shot from Adam Davis there. One visit. Cue ball flew straight into the middle pocket. You see there on the replay. Wasn't kicked in or anything like that, so uh, it's a bad start for Adam. And as already noted, these two played in the quarterfinals last year. Adam Davis ran out a 9-4 winner. And in fact, that match was seesaw in the early going until Davis took the last seven frames on the spin and that's a memory that Phil Harrison has had to carry with him for a year. Yes and very similar to our last two quarterfinals where they were close at the start of the match but the, the players seemed to run away with it. I think it's Young more important play. to Phil to get off to a good start than, uh, than Adam. Very steady campaigner is Phil Harrison and the TV stages arrive in the World Championships, he's always there or thereabouts. Red balls in play. He's thinking that he's uh, potted a yellow, then he's dumped a yellow over the bottom right hand corner to take control, so he's thinking clearly, not trying to do anything rash at this early stage of the semi final. Yeah, as we see there, Phil looking on. I think. Um Phil might be slight favourite in some people's eyes. As you say, there's the defeat from last year, but Phil played some really solid pool in his semi-final. All right, he wasn't in his sorry in his quarter-final. He wasn't pushed particularly hard by Darren Matthew, but um, Adam was a little bit out of sorts in that game against Gareth Potsley. 
Yeah, but with due respect to the, the calibre of the two players that the, these guys played, you know, Gareth Potts is a world champion, he's won it three out of four years. It was always going to be a, a nip and tuck match and the two good friends as well. And Darren Matthew, you know, it's the first time he's played on TV, so a total different matchup. It looks like we might have just settled into a, a little tactical battle here at the start of this semi-final. Yeah, they're both very good um, tactical players. <coughs> very good tactical players, both of these players, and hard and pool professional, seconds. so they're both um, got to be very strong on the tactical side of the game. Well, and two seeded players here didn't have to qualify, and for the very first time, in this year's Foster's World 8-Ball Pool Championship, it was wide open. Any player could pick up their cue, assuming they had the talent to go along with it, and they knew how to use it. And they could set off to one of the regional qualifiers to gain entry into this year's event. Come one, come all. But remember to bring your game. And one of our semifinalists, Mark Farnsworth, he did. He was a qualifier. He's through to the semifinals here. Now as he dropped onto that red to the same pocket. I'm not sure he has, Jimmy, looking on the overhead shot there. Sometimes it's a little bit deceiving. But, uh, it certainly looks like he might be blocked out. A little bit unlucky there because he's played a nice developing shot. Yeah, and doesn't look too bothered, so he, I'm sure he's got some sort of a shot. He may have one in the, the middle pocket. Let's have a quick look now whether that can... Uh, 30 seconds. Go past the other red. The other option, he could play the red onto the red if he can't get through, but it looks like he can get through. It's one thing to come into a match as favourite. It's another to establish that favouritism on the table. And Adam knowing that he took out the two-time defending champion in Gareth Potts might feel a little added weight on his shoulders. Expectations have risen. Yeah, he got a tough finish for the opening frame. 30 seconds. I think he was a little bit forced into it because he felt like control of the bottom right-hand corner and half a pocket covered on the bottom left-hand side. Great shot, affords him the chance to continue on with what has to be a very tricky clearance. Yeah, with all those balls clustered round the black, it's making this very awkward. He's going to just try and manoeuvre his way around, maybe have to just do a little bit of development here. Well, if he's straight on the, the red into the centre, he can just hold the cue ball and then play the, the red below the eight ball, just to the, the left of the black as we look. Well, he wants to... I think he's just OK. Just a question of whether that eight ball is available now, Lee, because he's dropped onto this red to the bottom left, and he may even have the red to the top corner but he certainly won't be taking that first. That'll be next. Well, just looking at bo Adam's body language, I think he's quite happy because um, he's one of them players that does show his emotion, so you'd know if things aren't going to be going into a pocket or he's out of position. I think he can just stun the, the, the red in and, and draw the cue ball over to the right-hand side. Well, he's elected to take it into the top. Well, he could have gone through a little bit further. So the first big test of the match here for Davis. Well, if this eight passes into the corner that he's looking at now, he's played that last red very lazily, in my opinion. He just might have been a little bit tentative with it. He wouldn't want to run maybe just behind that yellow that he's closest to now. So he could try to get a little bit further over, but... 30 uh, seconds. Say, big test. And into yeah. the heart of the pocket there, that red. And that will establish his confidence. Terrific red. 
and eyeing up a black. He's got about half a pocket here, the right-hand side as we look. He's got to be careful with this. And the trend continues. Whoever wins the lag wins the opening frame. Adam Davis carries on. It's 1-0. Phil Harrison, frame number two, needs a good break. He trails 1-0. He didn't hit those with a lot of conviction, but he got a yellow oh, and a red. And what a great result that break was. Like you said, there wasn't a lot of power. But the yellow's looking pretty good. A chance for Phil to get his first frame on the board. You won't see Phil rushing. Takes, takes his time, gets himself composed. Yellow balls in play. 30 seconds. As you say, certainly taking his time here, Phil. Just making sure that uh, he's plotting his way around his own mind. He knows which balls he wants to take in which order. So all the yellows are in the the bottom area of the table. You can just get himself the right angle below the eight. It should be a simple finish and level the scores up at one frame all. Thirty seconds. Phil has to know that he's got an edge in this, and that edge is experience. So I think that. You'll want to try and stay on Adam's heels, keep the pressure on, and hope that that experience will come to the fore at the back end of this match. See, and that, that was what I was saying in that, in that first frame about the, the Davis performance versus the Harrison performance. Phil's already been out there and played some really solid pool. You know, forget the opponent. He's, he's played the solid pool. Adam was a little bit indifferent. Different day, though, so I'm sure Adam Davis will be looking to bring his A game to the table today. And if he does, this will be a, a very close, hard fought match. Well, the first look we had at Adam, it looked like he got his A game. I think Adam's going to be a very tough opponent to beat here. Phil's really going to have to fly to win this match. Well, I think he may have heard you, Lee. Because he hasn't put a foot wrong in this frame. Control the white perfectly, made it look easy. Bill Harrison takes his opening frame. It's a 1-1 score here in Blackpool. So the 2-1 lead. And Harrison breaking. From the left running. side as we look. Well, you see there he adopted to come off the side of the pack. Well it's what the pool players call a cut break. It's in the second or the third ball down. Yeah, I think we've seen that used over the years with varying degrees of success, Lee. Um, I think I remember watching you and Rob Chilton once. We see once again this break shot. Yeah, you hit the second ball down. Yeah, mm. it can be a good break. I've never seen anybody do it successful, successfully on the eight foot table, though, and make balls and run out seconds. lots of frames. More successful on the seven foot tables. Red balls in play. Mm, certainly successful hit on that occasion for Phil Harrison. He's got one slightly awkward red. That he's going to have to develop from the left hand, right, left hand side, the top of the table, as you see there, just to the left of the top middle pocket. Well, he's looking at the awkward red now, next to the yellow. But also, you see the eight ball is surrounded by the yellows as well, so there's a lot of work to be done. And should he choose to go into that area in a couple of shots' time, 
not only does he need to develop it, he needs to land on a, a next red as well. So, chancing a little bit to luck here on this finish. 30 seconds. But he's certainly got the angle on this red. If he wants to develop that difficult one, Lee, this is his chance. Yeah, he's just have a look now how he wants to do it. I think ideally he would like to just flip the yellow away. By clipping too thin on the on the red, it, the cue ball could be going right up the table. A half ball contact on the red would be good as well. That's worked out fine. Yeah, it was a nice shot from Phil Harrison. Like you say, played with some control. Again, it's very easy to see, see some players just, the world just tried to blast into that, move the ball out, but he was thinking about where that cue ball was going to finish as well for his next shot, not just trusting to look. And the good part about it, that ball seconds. now, there's a path to the frame because he can just stop the cue ball similar to where the red is and the black goes in the bottom right-hand corner. The so. number seven seed this year looking very strong in the early going. Very committed to his to his game and you see a a consistent rhythm and speed around the table. That's always a sign of a guy that's in focus. Yeah, and he just played a very good shot there. Clipped the red down the rail, run on off a couple of cushions. Perfect position. A chance to extend his lead to two and have a 3 1 lead. If you notice that he's very short and his cue action very jabby. Bill Harrison, that's three in a row now. He's parking Adam Davis in his chair. 3-1 he leads. Yes, it's been a very good match so far. A couple of tactical frames, but as in mistakes, has been very few. Probably won by Adam, but Phil's been rock solid. Frame number five, it's a 3-1 score line in favor of Phil Harrison and Adam Davis needing a good break here. There's a lot more, a lot more power in that Open lane. He's a far better split of the ball from Adam Davis, but no friends. Nothing found its way into a pocket. Yeah, it's worrying times at the moment for Adam. He's uh, been frozen out of the match, as in chances to clear the, clear the table. He's had a, a few tactical frames, but actually chances to win frames, he's been really frozen out. And it's Phil that's dominating the match. But there's a long way to go yet. 30 seconds. You feel that he's going to take the red balls on with the, the two reds. Roughly where Phil is now, blocking the pockets, so just take control. That's a good kiss. Little wave red now tells you that he didn't get it. It could be another one of those where Phil's going to sit back and just try and wrestle the initiative, keep control and contain Adam Davis. And he's just weighing up whether that red will go past the yellow into the corner pocket. Looks extremely tightly. I think it possibly just goes by that yellow. I just have to pinch a little bit of the pocket. So whether he thinks here he's got an opportunity to go game. seconds. Yeah, you can see it does go, but you'd like to be right behind it straight. You have got much of the pocket to go at. And the problem is trying to get behind it straight. There's a yellow in a direct line behind it, so it could be. Yellow ball's in play. Yeah, you problem. see there, he just played a containing shot. He didn't play to pot that. Just got the pocket, put Adam up against his yellow ball. You get the feeling that Adam really doesn't want to enter into this sort of exchange. What can he do to keep it freewheeling and flowing? 30 seconds. I think he's looking whether he can clip the yellow into the bottom left-hand corner. If 
he does, he'll develop the other yellow. He's caught the red, has he flipped one in the middle? He has. Holds his hand up to say sorry to Phil. Very fortunate, see the red clipping the yellow, knocking it into the centre pockets. All of a sudden, Adam has a chance. I did say, what can Adam do? Try and get back into this frame and that little bit of luck. Yeah, we never mentioned Lady Luck. She just reared ahead. Give Adam a chance to have a go seconds. at the finish. Playing the plant, yellow onto yellow. Oh, that's a great shot. Very inventive there. He's Say the way you'd have looked at, he was lining it up to play one onto the other and then leave himself on position for the one along the bottom rail, but he's flicked off that one. So that shot has just uh, opened this frame up. here though if he knocks this one yellow end nearest the cushion he might be able to play it in a manner to flick the red out of the way and that would free all the yellows yes the, the only slight problem you would say here is the eight ball ideally you'd like it to pass into this bottom left hand corner If not, it doesn't look like it goes from that angle, so he may be forced to get behind it and play into the centre pocket. Thirty seconds. Either way, Lee, you get the feeling that he might want to leave one of those yellows down this end of the table, easier to drop on the black. Exactly, yes. He probably drew, draw the cue, cue ball back. Lee. If he's got an angle, he could go into the eight if he wanted, but there's no real need. He can just draw it into the middle of the table. And Perfect. Play the one at top and leave the yellow, as you said, Jim, to, to last at the bottom of the table, below the eight. about control. Seeing there now he's just come down the table just to check out where he wants to leave this cue ball. So that black into the left hand middle. Good shot. This was not a simple clearance. He's had to maneuver around. Some great positional play with that white. And in the end, he gets home. Adam Davis pulls one back. Three in a row went to Phil Harrison. He secures his second, 3-2. Welcome back to Blackpool. It would appear this first semi-final really is turning into something of a tactical battle. Really nothing in it, Keith, at this stage. Yeah, I'm not really surprised that it's kind of this close. So uh, You've got two very rock-steady players, uh, and they're both obviously trying to get the better of each other. But is it fair to say Adam's being frustrated by the sort of web that uh, Phil is spinning? I mean, you know all about that. Of course, and that's <laughs> one of the things you've got to do sometimes. But to be fair, I think when the balls are breaking, they're just not breaking uh, in Adam's favour, you know, and then Phil's... Out able to take control of the table each time which suits him obviously yeah you know how good Adam can be I mean he's the man that put you out of this competition are you surprised he hasn't done slightly better in this uh, first session um, I wouldn't say I'm, I'm surprised because obviously Phil is like a journeyman at, at this sport you know I mean he's been around he's, he's done it all and he knows what he has to do to win tricky matches and this is a very tricky match he knows really if he opens all the balls up he yes. could have got blown away very quickly but he looks at times a little dispirited whereas Phil just keeps working away and he's you know he's just chiseling a nice steady groove 
Yeah, that's right. Um, he's, he's looking pretty good, and he'll be a little bit disappointed that uh, maybe he's not a little bit further in front at the moment, but we'll, we'll see. It could it's, go right down to the wire? It could very much go down to the wire, this one. Keith, thank you for that. Let's go back to the action right now. Frame number eight. Yes, yeah, I employed the cut break. Open table. No friends at the table once again for Phil Harrison. As you say, Lee, nobody's ever employed that successfully on this TV table. And we'll just wonder whether Phil Harrison now, Phil Harrison needs to have a rethink on that for the next time he breaks. Well, I don't think he's ever mastered the break, and that's probably one of the reasons why he hasn't won this event. I mean, he's been to the quarterfinals, semi-finals, and when we move up on, onto this eight-foot table, you know, it, it's trickier. If you don't make the balls off the break, you play your likes of your seconds. Gareth Potts, your Mick Hills, your Adam Davises, they're going to punish you. You don't need to give them table time. You've got to have a break in this game. It's like not having a serve in tennis. You really have to be able to make a statement when you've got control of the table and you can seize the momentum with a good, powerful break. Red ball's in play. That's just an advantage you can't afford to give up. A little gummy from Adam, but I think he's played a very good shot there because he can take the red into the, the right hand centre and let the cue ball travel down. Disturb that clustered area. Trust into a little bit of lady luck. And I don't think he's had any fortune there. He's, he can still play the one into the right hand center and have another goat break in them open. He definitely has to try and mature the situation to yeah. turn this into a frame winning opportunity. I don't, I don't think it's the end of the world if you could pot the ball and get a red over that pocket where the cue ball is, but. You know, I think he's uh, he's chasing a finish which isn't really there at the moment. So the two reds are locked on the, the side cushion. There's a red between two yellows on the bottom cushion. Well, they just slid past. Looking like he's going to play the plant. So he's going to play the red onto the red. Tricky shot, but should he make it? Gives me a great opportunity. Yeah, it's almost like he's having to manufacture a finish early. As you say, it wasn't really there, and he's, he's chased it, but uh, got himself into a, a reasonable position here now. Well, it's seconds. good news, bad news here. If he if he gets it. I think that's a bad news. It wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't have been the end of the world if the red stayed over the pocket. Obviously, he's, he's trying to pot the red, and, he, and he's just hoping for a better luck. But the red was always going away from the pocket. So, I mean, I don't know whether he's got a double into the middle pocket, whether he can come off the cushion and play the plant into the middle pocket. He really hasn't hasn't got a shot as far as I can see. It looks like he may have to play the bottom one of the two reds and double it into the middle. The top one would go. <coughs> he is a very good doubler. In fact, these two players are probably the best two doublers Hello, on the planet. Uh, it didn't work for him there, though, Lee. And now uh, Phil Harrison's going to be coming to the table. Another opportunity. Well, I think he's got an easy finish here. If, if those uh, two yellows which are together go into the bottom left-hand corner, there's no reason why he, why Phil Harrison shouldn't extend 30 seconds. this ma superb match play that he's putting on at the moment. Well, that's a strange shot. I think he's just played a little bit harder than he wanted, and that's why that yellow's come back and uh, just. I just can't understand why he didn't have a go at the finish. So they were all there for the making. Mm. If Adam was to come out of this and pot one of the reds. Well, someone's just asked him if he can see that red, and I think Adam can.
Well, I'll tell you, Phil Harrison was tempting fate with that effort. He's fortunate that Harrison didn't, or sorry, that Adam Davis didn't knock that red in. That's why he should have gone for the finish. I mean, absolutely there's, there's agree. There's no reason Lee. why uh, he needed to defend that. Well, you start playing negative pool, and it can come back and bite you. So all of a sudden now, Adam's got the, the red over the top right-hand corner. Phil's got one bite. So 30 seconds. Really, you, you would expect Phil to take the finish out, but it's a lot harder than it should have been. He would like an angle to punch over for that now. I'm not sure if he has, so he, he may have to come back up for it later on in the frame. That looks pretty good. Play the red by the eight ball next. Even the yellow by the eight ball. But it's not an easy finish, is it? It's not one that uh, you can say he's guaranteed to get the finish. Yeah, because he's still got that a yellow ball on the in the middle of the bottom of the table, as we see on the left hand side there, that's right. The rails he's gonna have to get the right seconds. position on that. And then you're playing with pace. It's not actually on the rail, so when you're playing with some pace, a ball like that, it's got to be absolutely perfect to find the pocket. A little bit off it, lit the knuckles and and stay out. I think that the the shot that he's left himself though, um it's quite a clever shot. He can take the one into the middle pocket and leave himself an angle to take the one along the bottom rail and play up for these awkward yellow. Leaving the other two at the bottom end of the table. There's also a second prize involved with that one as well. Known full well that if he didn't make the yellow he got the pocket. Yeah, because there's that red and black in the same vicinity of that bottom right hand corner pocket. As you say, almost like an insurance shot here. Absolutely vital that he leaves himself the right angle though. On this yellow, to the same pocket he's playing this, he has to get up table. Yeah, that, that looks pretty good. But once again, he's got to play this in a fashion that he leaves himself the angle on that yellow top of the table to come back down for the one nearest the cue ball. A lot of ifs. He's going to leave that one to last. I like that choice. I like that choice a lot. Especially where the eight is. Big distance here for this cue ball to travel. Harrison's got to get this spot on. That's a great shot, one round three cushions. Absolutely perfect. You feel this is a big frame in the match. Phil to punish the mistake from Adam Davis. It's a little bit thinner than he would have liked, but no problems. I think what he's concerned about here is when he's going to be queuing over that red right in the jaws, and he's going to be have to lean over that. He's just concerned about his waistcoat maybe touching that red. You see, he's. Uh, I think he's he's a good way from it. He just needs to compose himself. Every time Adam Davis comes back at him, Bill Harrison has the reply. Frame number ten. Only time will tell. Harrison with the break. 5-4 in front. And he probably thought he should have been, well, everybody thought he should have been 6-3. And that's his best break of the match. Still, still did the second ball down, cut break. The red drops into the centre pocket. Yalas will probably be his, his choice here. Got a particularly easy opening yellow here, though, Lee. I don't think you have to take the one into the bottom right hand corner as we look from the overhead. Or he could play the three ball plant as another option. Yellow ball's nominated. 30 seconds. He's just looking at the plant now. So he's just sizing it up. 
Well, Adam Davis has yet to put two frames together on the winner's side. And if Phil Harrison has his way, he's not going to start now. So no, so the ball's in well. play. The only problem with that shot, Lee, is those, uh, those two yellows are now gone to the top left-hand corner, as we see on the rail, and blocking, well, one's obviously blocking the other one. But what, looking there, he's probably going to have to look into play a plant on them at some point. But what we did see, if you played the play it at the right pace, the pockets are quite generous, so um, I think he might be able to pinch it a little bit, so I fully expect him to take the seconds. finish out. See Phil's arms shaking there. Lots of movement in his uh, bridge arm. The two yellows nearest the bottom left. If nothing else, will afford Harrison the chance to gain control. And if this match, this frame, follows the same pattern as the first half that have been played, and you, he's right behind it. Yeah, he's played a great shot there because he's just high enough to play the plant and leave himself the right angle. Yes, exactly. So playing this plant with conviction will tell a tale. So he's just iron it up, pick, picking his angle. As long as he plays it, plays it the right pace, he'll be fine. Good shot. <coughs> well, he won't want to be as careless as he was in the last frame on the Yellers. He's showing you where he wants to put the cue ball. It's all about cue ball control again. No hard pots. Perfect position. And if you notice, Phil's slightly moved his speed up a bit. He's uh, pacing around the table, back and forth. Well, he's got, he's got to be feeling a little bit angry inside, you say, after that missed black in the last frame. So he's probably thinking, right, come on, let's get on with this. And uh, he knows that the way the first half of the match has panned out, he's playing a good enough game to get through to that World Championship final. Yes, a final that, to this point in his career, has eluded him. Be a great story. While his cue ball's going a little bit close to the rib, I think he's all right queuing. Well, the best way to erase the memory of a bad miss is to secure the next frame, and that's just what Phil has done. 6 4 he leads. Morning. Adam Davis to break. Frame number 11. 6 4 he trails. He's really got to try and impart his will in this match. And that break won't help him. Very messy at the bottom end of the table. Lee, our studio guest, Keith Brewer, alluded to the fact that the balls just aren't breaking for him. It isn't so much that he, he can't get going. He's not being allowed to get going. Yes, he's been bogged down in this match, and that's probably why he's so frustrated. Again, he's made a ball, but look at the cluster of balls there that he's got to somehow develop. A couple of cannons, you know, and needs a match to go more open, I think, if he's going to win it. Like yet, the whole world's against you, Jim. And yet in the preceding frame, though, guys, Phil Harrison broke and cleared. I think that might have been the first break and finish in the match. The only one. And this will take some, some kind of play. And if Adam can finish from here, tall order. Yeah, I think he'll be taking the one down the rail into the bottom right-hand corner. I'll be hoping to draw the cue ball back because he could seconds. make a disturbance on the yellow. He's going to make the disturbance now. We'll take the yellow into the bottom left and screw the cue ball into the red, which is glued to the yellow. 
Well, he's done that. I don't think he's had any luck. Took the ball by the horns, but... I don't know whether he actually looked whether that plant, you know, because it, it was a direct plant in the end, as soon as he made contact with the red, the yellow's gone straight into the pocket. Well, I think he expected the two yellows, which uh, are nearest the eight ball now, he expected to land on one of those, and he's been a bit unfortunate. Well, he may have to play a plant. I don't think one yellow passes the other. You know, certainly looking at the shot Adam just played, I think he now subscribes to the theory he's not going to wait seconds. for his ship to come in, he's going to swim out to it. He just doesn't want to sink though. <laughs> What's the saying about pushing the boat out, Jim? Time out. Forgot about the anchor. Touching red ball, red ball's in play. Adam walks away. Time running. And not exactly a positive stride back to his chair, was it? No, I think his chance is arm and it just hasn't worked out for him. It's just one of those matches at the moment. The ball's just not running for him. He's not being allowed to play. And all but for one shot here where he's bridging over the red. If he makes this one along the bottom cushion, the frame's at his mercy. A great opportunity now for Phil. And it's just been one way traffic all the way through, and really, he should be more than 6 4 in front. Well, yeah, that missed eight. Win or lose this match, I think Phil's going to take that one away from this semi final. And at some point during this match, Phil's going to start thinking about playing in the world final. So he'll want to build as big a lead as possible before he does start thinking about seconds. that. Because he's been to this position a few times now and it will play on his mind. I'll tell you what, Lee, I think Phil Harrison's been thinking about playing in a world final for a long time now. Not just during this game or towards the end of this game. Every time he's been in this situation he every must have had it in his mind. Every time we come to Blackpool, it's front and center on his mind, on every player's mind. But I can never, never recall Phil being in the semi-final where he's been so dominant through the match. This is without doubt his best chance to get through to the world final. He's controlled the match, he's had all the opportunities. So if he doesn't make it through this time, then y you feel like he'll never have a better opportunity. And 35 years of age as well, Lee. You know, his best years better come soon. Spinning that cue ball. Just pointing again with the cue. Wants to visualise the shot in his mind, where that cue ball wants to be, and his next shot. Needed to be a little bit further down for ideal position. May have to take the one in Newstead Rail. Should still be okay, I mean, doesn't need to play it with any great power. You can just stun this off the side rail. Yeah, and if you're going to win a world title, these are the finishes you've got to take anyway, so to extend his lead further. If you're going to win any match, Lee, these are the sort of finishes you've got to take out. And this is certainly a statement from Phil Harrison now. Another nail right. hammered into Adam Davis's coffin. Phil Harrison, 7-4 in front. Cue ball passed over to Harrison. A 7-4 lead, a comfortable lead, maybe, maybe not. But he's got the break to try and extend it. Frame number 12. Well, that's been one of the better splits without a ball dropping, so half a chance here for Adam. He needs to try and put a few, a few frames together here. Get that back arm oiled and get a little confidence, a little a little bounce in his step. Well, he's he's more than capable of running three and four racks together. So, you know, this is an ideal opportunity to 
to start the... Oh, he's missed. Well, that tells me that he's not quite... He's not quite thinking straight anymore, Jim. You know, he, he's been frozen out the match. That, that, that's a, a makeable shot by Adam. And Open table. It's going to be a long way back for him, I think. Yes, yeah, a product of having to endure what that man has set forth. Got all those negative thoughts swirling in his head. Does Adam? 30 seconds. And that's never a recipe for success. I think Phil looks like he's taking the plant on here. And he'll be taking the yellow suit. Yellow ball's in play. And one shot has just laid the foundation for a fairly easy clearance. Everything attainable, just a matter of keeping that white ball under control. <coughs> he won three frames earlier in this match, <coughs> following Adam Davis's opening frame win. Three in a row to Harrison. He's going to look to duplicate that feat here, and that will take him further seconds. in front should he do it. And it's all about punishing the mistakes. If Phil can punish that mistake from Adam Davis, it will be rooted in his brain. Well, if he does get to 8-4, which he should well do, you just can't see any way back for Adam Davis. He's given us nothing to believe that he can string some frames together, Lee. Yeah, he just he, he needs some sort of inspiration. He's certainly a player that can come back in the match, you know. I practice with him, but I don't think he's given us anything like you said, Jim, that, that gives you any inkling that he is going to do that. And the match has continued where Phil Harrison has been totally dominant. And, uh, and as well as being dominant, he's been rock solid, all but for one, one real blooper in the ninth frame you know it's been solid match play and let's not forget Phil Harrison former world number one tour champion winner of many professional events one of the players that they say is probably one of the best players never to have won this event <coughs> shake of his head so that means he's absolutely perfect again as you see he was absolutely perfect not so sure he is this time though Lee is he? Well, he's I a little low I think he can uh, take the black into the middle pocket and just make sure of it that way I think he's gonna have to I don't think that was the original game plan just traveled a little further with that cue ball than intended. But I think he has no choice but to play that eight into the center pocket now. And he's just mapping his path out. 30 seconds. Really, you just got to screw to the bottom cushion, two cushions, just guarantee yourself a shot. Well, that's a great shot. It's run around two cushions, three cushions. Absolutely perfect. How risky was that shot? It's a sign of confidence, though, Jim. 100%. A lot could have gone wrong, but it didn't. Bill Harrison, 8-4. And watch just two more frames for a place in the final. 9-4. Time a running. very comfortable lead. Adam Davis can now afford no more mistakes at all. And the match may well be out of his hands already. Phil Harrison with the break. Frame number 14. Yeah, he didn't hit that near as hard as he has in the past. And look at the cluster of colors at the bottom end. And how many times have we said, look at the cluster at the bottom end? It's nearly every frame that we've watched. Could have saved something on the commentary fees, at least. Could have just made a tape of it at the beginning. But I have to think, Lee, that when you're sitting on the hill, you've got your opponent dead and buried, and you're breaking. Why wouldn't you hammer the break? 
Well, he's, the way he's played the match, he's always played the second ball down, so if it ain't broke, don't try and fix it, you know, it's worked for him, the frames have been messy Red every time. We might get Adam chasing at a finish, and he, next time he comes to the table, he could have seven balls and, and Adam be on one. But the, the other thing which we should take into account was Adam's final beating Gareth in the, in the quarter-final match. You know, it was a big match for him. Local rivalry. 30 seconds. Has it took anything out of him? Because even though he hasn't been given many chances, he hasn't really forced many chances himself. No, but the few chances he's had, we've seen some unforced errors from Adam. And... One can only wonder if that big win might not have added just a little pressure into the semi-final. Expectations, as I said earlier, may have been a little higher than would normally have been the case. You can speculate all you want. Right now, he's got no room for mistakes at all. Well, I'm not sure if he played to uh, cannon into the, the red just above the eight ball. Well, he must have done late because it doesn't actually go anywhere at the moment, so he has just tried to develop that red out. He's got another chance here where he can clip the red down along the rail and bring the white ball into that area. Probably take the yellow out. He takes the red out. He thinks, well, he must have by the way he's played it. There's a, a window to, to, to take the black, take the red off the black, draw the cue ball back into the yellow. A good chance to win. I suppose frame in a very long time and stop the rot. Yeah, I think the overhead view we had just deceived us a little bit there, and as you said, we had the uh, the window to get in there at that red. So from what looked at like a messy table, two world champions watching over, one current, one hoping. Good solid stroke. And a nice angle to just drop below that eight. He's just showing you where he'd like to drop that cue ball. So he's going to have to put a tougher black than he would like. Certainly after losing the last five frames in a row. Needs a nudge. I think well, he's just okay. We'll tell by his body language. He's, yeah, he's, he's perfect. Again, risky, but lives to fight on. Adam Davis, one back. So Phil Harrison's going to have to play one more frame. Fifteenth frame. Adam Davis trailing 9-5, desperately needing a good split here. And without a doubt, the best break of the match from his perspective. Red balls in play. Well, it's a great break. I mean, if he takes a reds out like he should do, all of a sudden, the lead gets reduced. And the elusive last frame from Phil Harrison's point of view just takes another step away. He certainly has to feel like he's going to get a chance or two. Well, he's certainly going to get a couple of breaks, but the breaks haven't really been uh, his friend, really. But it will, his heart rate will start to race a little bit more. Just seen two frames whiz by in a matter of minutes.
This is certainly much more like the game that Adam Davis wanted. Oh, he's now sort of moving into a flow lee. He's taking out two finishes on the run or looking to. You know, it's the sort of match that he wanted, open the flowing, and we, we've seen Adam Davis many times on the telly. Uh, he won the international masters, and he did that by breaking and dishing. He didn't. He didn't have a match like this where he was uh, having to play a lot of tactical shots. And for him to win the match, slightly overdone that. Should still be okay. If he's going to win the match, it's going to be like a front foot forward, no other way. But this has to be good medicine. Yes, Eight deposited. One more back. Nine six. Will Harrison hit them harder this time? Nine six. He's lost the last two. No. The cut break. He's got two balls down though. Regardless. Just look a at chance. The, yeah, just look at both sets here. Red certainly. Yeah, and it certainly looked like it was going to be a dry break. So this is his opportunity, his first chance. You see the break, second ball down. One hits the middle, but the last two balls rolling, sneak into the pockets. 30 seconds. And these are anxious moments now for Phil Harrison. It's anxious moments as well for Adam Davis because he's thinking, how is this man going to react? Is he going to get a little bit flustered? Is he going to give me a chance? Sat there hoping. Well, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of uh, work to be done in this frame. Bill's trying to make sure of everything. You know, there's, it's not the hardest finish in the world, but then again, this is for a place in the Foster's World 8 Bull Singles Final. You can see from that shot, everything's got a pocket to go into. Where's the cue ball going? Behind the yellow. Well, Dead behind the yellow. Well, that's Adam's first prayer answered. Another go at the table. Well, that's just sheer adrenaline and nerves, I think, to land behind that one. I think the problem was he'd come too far on the previous shot. He wanted to be almost straight on that or a little bit towards the bulk end of the table. He looks to the heavens as though he's been cursed, but total snooker. It's there of his own doing. Thirty seconds. Can you see Adam then out of his seat, eager to get another visit. Knows he could have been out the tournament, but he also knows, seen that mistake, he could be well back in the tournament. He's trying to come up off the top rail and back down. Missed it. Come on, oh, that's unbelievable. Oh, Cannot believe he's missed visits. that red. Well yeah, you'd expect him to get it. He's obviously worried about the, the four jaw. And two visits to Adam Davis. But and nope. another breath of life. Yeah, he could get the match within two frames. And all of a sudden, both players start to believe again that one might win it, that the other one might lose it. They don't want to throw it away. And there'll only be one person really thinking about throwing it away. And that, the man, that was the man who was 9-5 up. Yeah, you never want to be remembered for losing a semi-final where the player came in and won the last six on a row. Or in a row, sorry, to, uh, to swipe your place. The pressure is still right now on Adam. He's still got to provide the goods. He's got a lot of work to do. Harrison knows he's going to come back to the table at least one more time. 
If it goes that far, he will have the break in the 18th frame. And he looked like he was prying again. But I think he's resigned to losing this frame. Adam's still having two visits remaining. Just wonder if he'll look at wasting one of the visits here just to make sure no. I say, I just thought he was a little bit oh. too much of an angle on that. I thought he might have just bumped it to the pocket, dropped it in, and he's got the yellow into the other middle pocket then. Well, I think it is that the, the cue ball is slightly heavier, so when you play those shots aside, they don't come off as wide, and I think that just caught him out. So now he's got two shots, got to waste a shot. He'll be furious with himself. Must hit a cushion, can't just bump the balls into the open. Thirty seconds. So now he's uh, he's made hard work of what should have been a routine finish for him. He's going to play the yellow off the red towards the pocket. Second judged, <laughs> and the second visit in. to prolong the match. Eight into the right center. Nine, seven, and counting. Adam Davis, three in a row. Nine, seven to Phil Harrison. Adam Davis at the table. It's a race to 10, best of 19 for a place in the Foster's World 8-Ball Pool Championship. Right, Adam split. Davis, I'll tell you what, Sean, he's not going away, is he? No, so it's a great split, but just look where that black has finished. We see there on the overhead replay. It's tucked in there. Red ball's in play. So it's forcing him to take the reds. It's just a question of whether the hole is too deep to dig out of. Adam was just waving his cue there, hoping that, willing that cue ball to go a little bit further on. So that's a great shot from Adam, spinning the cue ball around. And he'll have to leave angle on that red nearest the right corner because he does have to develop that eight. Well, he's got, he's got the option, Jim. He can uh, play the one into the, the right-hand centre next and, and do the split then knowing he's got one near the pocket or he can leave it to last. Uh, it's per personal preference. I, I would imagine he'd be playing on it next. The thing is, when he runs into that, that red and that black to develop it, ideally he'd like to have an insurance ball, you know, one that he's, all, he's still going to be on almost no matter where he leaves the cue ball. He hasn't got that. Well, he still needs to be lucky, though. He's got the angle on either red, just his choice. So this is the big shot. Yes, every time you run into balls, you need a little bit of lady luck. Yeah. That's a great shot. Where's the eight ball gone? Should be all right. Looks like it'll pass into the side pocket. But now he's showing you where he wants to go with the cue ball. He's got to hit this with a little more pace and get over with the cue ball. Well, that's not great. No. Needed the cue ball to travel a little bit further. I think he's still going to have a shot at the eight ball. But it'll be a little bit further away than he would have liked. Time out. Might be able to hit this and just spin that cue ball a little to stay to the right side, that's what he's doing, but he's stretching. He was looking there, he might have taken the rest, but opted not to. Yeah, he just pinched a little bit of the pocket to keep the angle. <laughs> to get to 9-8. And who would have given Adam Davis a chance four frames ago? Unbelievable. Gets himself right back in the match and misses.
the biggest ball of his career. Killer ball's in play. Well, he doesn't want to go back to his seat, but you've got to feel if Phil Harrison is ever going to get to world final, he will not have a better opportunity. And this is routine. Phil Harrison is in the in the world final for me. Yeah, he's got just got to try and block out all those thoughts and just think about being in the practice room and just knocking a finish in. That's just bread and butter, really. Well, remember he's been shut out the last three frames, so he's been in his chair. That back arm has certainly got a little rusty. Yeah, he's certainly going to be nervous, but you couldn't have the balls placed any better. You know, I'd like him to pick his pace up if, if you want to see him play confident, confidently. I think the more time he takes, he could make a meal of a, of a very easy finish. Where's he going again? Well, I'll tell you what, he's been incredibly lucky there. Has he? That's just unbelievable shot. Can he get through to the ones near the pocket? If he has, he's been very fortunate. Oh, I'm not sure he can. That is unbelievable. I think he's going to have to play a plant, you see there, yellow. And now this is where it all goes wrong. It all goes wrong, or it could all go wrong? Well, it all went wrong on the last shot. And we've, yeah, we've seen it all go wrong for Adam Davis. Well, if he doesn't get out frame. from here, he just he won't be able to speak for the week. It's just inconceivable they could miss this finish. Oh, very fortunate, very anxious. Well, I'm not sure if the, the bottom yellow passes is having a look. Well, it must do. Oh, he's looking he's again. Oh, he's making a meal of these, which well, they were very simple. But how easy do you want him to get into the world final? He's back on track, very relieved. He's picked his pace up. He knows that he'll never get a better opportunity. But it just goes to show how much it means to him, how, how nervous he is to a routine finish. So he's two balls away from his first world final. And the simplest of eights. And Phil Harrison has done it. For the first time, he will appear in the world final. A 10-7 victor over a very game Adam Davis. Phil Harrison through to the final. So, in the end, Phil Harrison made it, but it was only just, wasn't it? Pretty tense stuff at the end there. Keith watching that with me. I mean, that was a real ebb and flow, wasn't it, the way that was going? It looked as if Adam had it, uh, you know, all to do. Suddenly, he was right back in it, as he did against you. Exciting finish to a match. Uh, Adam never gives up, because he's a proper professional player. Um, he will be a little disappointed he's Mr. Black. I'm telling you, 9-8, I think he's probably favourite from then. Yes, but you were making the point to me as we watched this that uh, Adam's got this ability to come back from seemingly death. I mean, he was, what, 9-4 nine, nine, down? He was r rattling those frames off as he did against you when he was 7-2 down. It's, it's just the way a match can go sometimes. When you're one frame from defeat and your back's truly against the wall, you decide to let your arm go, all of a sudden you can produce your best pull yeah. from nowhere. And then, of course, the pressure automatically goes onto the guy who's in front, onto Phil, and then it affects his game. But Phil was very clever because he was imposing his style of pull onto Adam. Adam really didn't want to be drawn into some of that short stuff. He wanted to keep the play open, didn't he? The match as a whole, Dave, yeah, I mean, Phil really did play a, a very good match, rock solid, he knew what he was doing, he had a game plan, and it worked. Yeah, uh, so the thoughts now on this, uh, the final, because he's through to the final, this is a brilliant performance from Phil. He'll be delighted, mate, because uh, he's been knocking on the door for so long, and uh, finally he's made it. There's a lot of people be truly happy for him. Yeah, well, we're obviously delighted for him. Let's now hear from the man himself, he's with Jim. Yes, a very happy Phil Harrison, and uh, I guess relief paramount right now, Phil. Uh, yeah, very relieved, always struggling, you know, I've had 
I've lost in four semi-finals before and to be fair to Adam, he come back at me really strong and um, I was twitching all over the place. But <laughs> it, <laughs> it, it would be very remiss of me not to uh, mention that eight you missed to go 6-3 ahead. Yeah, I know, it was a big black, but uh, you know, I, I played well leading up to it and uh, I probably got a bit too close to it and obviously the pressure and everything, I, I was struggling to see the parting angle and uh, I just missed it, you know, so just, it happens, doesn't it, you know. Well, you're through to your first final. How are you feeling, Phil? Uh, very, very relieved and happy and, you know, everything, you know, brilliant. Yeah. Any preference on who you play? Uh, I, don't, I don't mind, you know, I don't mind who I play, I suppose. Maybe I'd like to play Mick, I suppose, but, uh, you know, me and Mick have had a lot of great games in the past, so uh, that would be good. And uh, now, uh, as far as preparation goes, how are you going to prepare for this? Um, I don't know. Same as I have done, you know, just go out with my brother and me mate and just walk into town and just chill out for the day and then just come back and, you know, have something to eat and have an hour's practice and then get on with it. Well, Phil, I know there's a lot of fans out there that are going to be cheering for you, and uh, certainly it's going to be a, a great final, first appearance in the final, and uh, all the very best. We're looking forward to it. Thank you very much, Mike. Cheers. Thanks. So what a terrific performance from Phil Harrison. He's through to his first final. He seems so relaxed, doesn't he? But I'm sure it's pretty tense out there. But uh, well done too to Adam. He made a great effort and wasn't quite going to be his day. Let's just remind you of the score and how things now look in this tournament. And there we are. Phil Harrison taking it against Adam Davis. And uh, obviously still to come that other semi-final between the former world champion Mick Hill and Mark Farnsworth. So there we go. That's uh, how it looks. Don't forget to join us for that second semi-final. We'll see you next time. In the meantime, from everyone here at Blackpool, it's goodbye for now.